Strategy for Growth and Poverty Reduction, locally known as Mkuta 2 and Kuza, in the case of Tanzania mainland and Zanzibar, respectively. Tanzania has embraced the MDGs within its national poverty monitoring system since 2000 and has made considerable progress in achieving the targets. Targets like the primary, primary school net enrollment, equity in primary education, access to safe water, and reduction in child mortality have already been met or are now on track to be met by 2015. Despite the important progress that has been made, a lot of effort is it's required to re in the cases of where they need to reduce child mortality, uh, I mean to reduce maternal mortality, to halt and reverse the spread of HIV AIDS. Etc. Through the course of implementing the MDGs, the United Nations Association of Tanzania, as an awareness, as an MDG awareness program where they partner with UNA Finland, UNA South Africa, and yeah, and UNA South Africa in implementing awareness for the youths and uh, counselors and CSOs, youths uh, in secondary school and in high school. Through this program, the, basically what the organization is trying to do is get views, first impact the, the youth with MDG awareness and get the youth to air their views. So in the light of this uh, program, uh, we, during the Tanzania model, in the, during the Tanzania International Model UN program in the DOMA, we, we, we interview different youths to see their views and their perspective on the MDGs framework for 2015 development agenda and the world they want. And this is what they use hard to say. I'm the chairperson of Committee 4, which is Climate Change Adaptation <coughs> and Sustainable Energy. As we all know, the MDGs were implemented in the year 2000, and uh, MDG number 7, it stated that we need to ensure environmental sustainability. However, let's ask ourselves, how far has this been done? 
what were the targets tangible? Were they were they specific? Personally, I believe that some targets lack specificity, and uh, due to the lack of consultation of all population groups, for example, the disabled weren't consulted, many stakeholders weren't consulted, only a few population groups uh, were consulted, and I believe this was a big weakness for the MDGs. Also, uh, I believe that key elements such as human rights were missed out. Okay, so geography has always been my passion. As a human, I believe it's a responsibility to plant trees, at least plant one tree in your life. It can make a big difference. A seed the size of my thumbnail can make a great impact on the world. So I urge the audience, all of you, whenever you get time, just plant one tree. It could make a big difference. And, uh, well, my vision for the future world, as, as a p passionate geographist, I want to see a world that is greener. I don't... Okay, globalization and modernization development should take place. However, at the same time, large businesses should, should adapt eco-friendly policies. For example, large industries, they emit carbon, emis carbon dioxide emissions and they've polluted the environment immensely. However, I believe there are alternative methods of uh, production that are eco-friendly and should be implemented in each and every country. Also, uh, the fact that the youth weren't, wasn't consulted, I believe it's very unfair, but now, in the post-2015, I believe that we're privileged enough to have our voice to be heard. I urge every single youth in the audience to raise their voices. We are the recipients of these goals. Why shouldn't, be, why shouldn't we be the makers also? If we're the recipients, we're the makers also. We shouldn't let other people take over our decisions. They don't know what we want. You know what you want. So you speak. Also, as Ban Ki-moon said, nothing about us, nothing about the youth without the youth. Because nobody else knows what you want. So speak up and go online and fill up the form and tell us what you want. Well, in 2000, the MDGs were enacted and adapted by the UN. These MDGs were had different topics. But personally, I think they have a weakness because youth were not involved in enacting these MDGs. And also, as we see until right now, women are still suffering from several diseases, such as fistula. And most women are dropping out of school because of early pregnancies. And many women are still dying in hospitals due to poor health services. Um, for the post-2015, I would like to see MDGs that would involve study from the grassroots level to the top level. And a clear way should be shown how the MDGs will be implemented fully so as to promote the society and allowing equity to take place in society by allowing sustainable development. I expect to see a world that is better for us all because if it will be good for us all, it will benefit all of us. I expect to see a world that is better, greener, full of peace, harmony and avoiding racism in our society. As Ban Ki-moon said, nothing about us without us. Thank you. I would like to speak upon the MDGs. The MDGs were created in order to lead our countries in um, attaining them. But I think that they were constructed, but there, were, there was no specific directions on how to implement them. So um, they have that weakness, according to me, I mean, um, from what we could see. So generally speaking, I think that um, they, they were helpful and there were guidelines towards achieving them, but there was no specific um, way of trying to, to reach to them. But um, MDG number one, for example, eradication of extreme poverty and hunger, I think it was failed to be reached because, and it saddens me that it had failed to be attained because most countries are suffering from hunger. And um, we could tell, we, could, uh, we have statistics showing us that people are dying from hunger and famine, and it's also advocated uh, by not ensuring environmental sustainability. So I think that most of the goals were not um, met because it's tough to, 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 to do so in a short time frame. That's why this post-2015 Millennium Development Goals were, are going to be formulated in order to try to adapt the MDGs and try to um, make them better. So I think that we would try to come up with better ideas as the youth. We should participate in various um, FDGs and various consultations in trying to air our views to make these better, uh, make these uh, post 2015 Millennium Development Goals better. And the world I envision is a world which has equality, 
and gender has no poverty and hunger because I am sure that this world is full of resources, it's, it's full of potential, but we do not have the leaders that can lead us into attaining that status we need as a human being, you know, because it saddens me to hear that in a country full of resources and minerals and, and vast resources, it, um, it really hurts me to hear that people are dying of hunger while other countries have surplus production and um, food is decaying in other countries. So I really want to envision um, a world which does not, which does not have these incidents and which has a better arena for everybody to give out their potential to the maximum. Thank you. Provided, and I'll also, I mean, also envision a world that youth, um, well, technology, youth use technology to eradicate the, the education that they have and technology to eradicate all our problems in the society and the world at large. Thank you. Also envision a world that youth, um, well, technology, youth use technology, education that they have, and technology to eradicate all our problems in the society and the world at large. Thank you. Talking on the Millennium Development Goals, though the United Nations have strived hard to set up the Millennium Development Goals, but generally the framework that led to the setting of these goals um, did not involve youth at that time because just the officials of the United Nations sat down without consulting people from various places, meaning youth, the disabled people, the children and also the elderly people. This not allowing various groups of people to set their own goals towards what they want in their world. Therefore, the framework, generally the framework of uh, making the Millennium Development Goals which are going to end in 20, which are going to be ending in 2015, did not involve various <coughs> groups of people. Therefore, me as a youth, I would like to have, I would like to propose different kinds of things that will be there on the post-2015 agenda. For example, I'd like to see a world where settling of disputes on, and conflicts is there immediately when the problem arises and not waiting until problems become large and causing wars and uh, wars and destruction of properties, killing of people. We observe that many countries in the world are now fighting and some countries like Somalia, some countries in the Arab countries, Libya and Egypt, all those countries, the situations are not good just because of disputes. Now, how do you expect to eradicate poverty when you have such situations? How do you expect to improve maternal health while you have that situation? How do you expect to develop global partnership for development where you don't have peace? Therefore, I ask the society in the world, and I'd like to see this in the post-2015 agenda, that the world should be able to settle disputes and policies policies that will enable settling of disputes as immediate as possible so as to prevent so as to prevent occurrence of disputes. Also, I'd like to see a world where education, the, the, the whole thing of education, would touch various groups of people. Various groups of people meaning those marginalized and those which are marginalized. Meaning that the disabled group and the able group will be able to get education in all forms that, that they can get, meaning if it's formal education, it's formal education or education from the environment, so as to enable them to tackle various uh, various problems in the society and employ themselves so that they can reach a better position. I would also like to see a world that provides education that is entrepreneurship based, so that people may have uh, the ability to to implement skills that they have into the real life and employ themselves and, do, and not depending on being employed, on being called, being called for employment. Therefore, I would like to see uh, generally a world that is with peace and uh, controlling these uh, things like nuclear actions, nuclear activities that threaten that threatens the world. Because as we know, the world that is coming in the future is our world. We youth. This is the coming world is ours. So if such actions carried out by such uh, by great nations such as nuclear actions activities making nuclear weapons is going to affect our world so i'm urging the world and those uh, big nations together with other nations to have li some limits when conducting things like nuclear activities and nuclear materials that they're affecting our climate and our environment in general because the world that we want is a better place and not the world that they want but this is our world because it's the future world thank you I'll talk a bit about MDGs I give a appreciation to you and for having these MDGs to which Dodi uh, is acting upon and so um, 
I think they are good enough, but the problem is many of them they are remaining on the papers. MDGs are remaining on theories and not practicalities. As for as for us youth, we would like to see MDGs are being acted upon us because we are the future. We can give hope to the world. We are the future to which the world is waiting for us to act upon it. So I would like to see the world to which youth are the ones being empowered, being given chances to talk, to speak out loud, and to be heard. Actually, everything and everything in the world is being acted upon the youth. So if the youth are affected, then the whole world is affected. What I would like to see in the future and in the post-2015 development agenda, the youth should take a big part upon it. They should get a chance to speak their minds and the world should be held with the youth. Because as you stroke the youth, then the world is no longer a better place to live. Okay, what, what I see about the MDGs framework is the, the United Nations came up with something very relevant and they collected uh, very um, relevant problems that African countries first as uh, we look at, take a look at the poverty, health, diseases and education. So what happens is that they, from 2000 to 2015 is uh, 15 years, which I, I see is that it, it's not uh, quite a good time. I mean, good time to achieve all the goals that they, they have been set. But what I, I see is that they, they did something very relevant, and the millennium you know, the goals were helpful so far. As we have seen that millions of people in Africa, they, have, they now have uh, good sun access to water, and also we have good education concerning the universal primary education. And also, the MDGs have helped to realize that what are the major problems that the countries should, should focus. Um, what I would I want to say about the remaining time that people should also, concerning the post-2015 development agenda, people should focus. They, they should use the Millennium Development Goals to come up with something different. I think the Millennium Development Goals, what, what lacked is that they some inclusiveness in coming up with a new new agenda, but what we want to see now is that the Millennium Development Goals having targeting some problems like conflict resolution in Africa, because most of the problems which Africa face now are because of the conflict, conflicts in some countries and also political problems in some, most of the different I mean, countries in Africa. So if the Millennium Development Goals we could have the conflict resolutions and um, also inclusiveness among the people, group dynamics in Africa, they could have a good approach in another new agenda after 2015. The world I would like to see is that the world which people have sustainable education, the education that allows people to, to employ themselves and also to employ others. So we want to see something like a sustainable, a sustainable world in everything. That is what I would want to see in with them did this framework, how it they were planned to be at least it has succeeded to some extent by creating awareness to, uh, among youths and their community the world. But also to another side it hasn't improved well to the developing countries like Tanzania. Due to the reason behind, we have, let's say, for the case of education, we have a number of schools, but yet it is in terms of quantity, not quality. So we are, we are experiencing mass failure for the students here, the primary level, the secondary level, so yet we, we need it to still this and it is on the part of education to be improved. And this creates even um, the product which is not good, not of the education. Let's say after graduating these students of ours at the normally at each stage, they are not capable to cope with the society that they're existing. With this, I might say that some of the MDDs have improved to make 
awareness among youth is, but some still it is a long journey to be proved. So in the post agenda of 2015, I wish the sound of, of youth is to be more, um, to be more, let's say, sounded to among of the society stories can be received what they need and to how to prepare them in order to improve what it was happening before. But when we talk in general, let's say in the case of development and the poverty, we find it just it is a cause of which needs um, the creativity of, human, uh, of the community at, at large, whereby I, as a part of it, youth is, and whoever, we need to start with the individual stage in order. We are the ones to improve these MGDs, we are the ones to implement not only the United Nations, not only the governments, but also ourselves. We should start ourselves then to the family level, to the community level, we extend to that until to the national level, uh, hence at the international level. So we need to start ourselves to our patriotism spirit that how can improve this, not waiting and blaming others that somebody or the government should become an improve for the case of education, employment, and poverty. Poverty might be a concept that we are creating here. We might be some areas we haven't prepared ourselves at individual basis. So meanwhile, we need to get prepared. And also, that chance is from the government, the authorities concerned to these youth is specifically. They need something. So I mean that this time they are graduating from universities. They think to have opportunities, but yet they are missing to I might say I don't you know, some sort of missing patriotism due to um, from the governments. So with these remarks, I might say that what the world we wish to be or I want to see in the future, which might assist even my children to come, it's the world that which will be transparent to these youth is to invite them and to let them speak up. By inviting their their voices, can be assisted and can let them be in their peaceful world. Thank you. Commenting on how far the uh, Millennium Development Goals have been achieved uh, in our countries, really I can say that some, especially uh, universal uh, primary education, in case uh, in, in the target of enrollment of the children has been uh, fulfilled. But yet, uh, if we critically think about it, to some extent it has not been fully achieved because, uh, yes, uh, many children have been enrolled in primary schools, but yet uh, what they know and uh, the things they can after that primary education is still questionable because we have incidents that some of uh, the kids after primary schools can't read, can't write, which is uh, something uh, Difficult. The eradication of poverty, employment, things like that, growth partnership are still uh, way uh, far from being uh, achieved in especially uh, countries, uh, the developing countries. So I'm saying uh, when we talk of the uh, post uh, 2015 development agenda, we now uh, need uh, the whole community uh, to be involved. If we take a critical thinking on the last uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals we are talking about here, uh, take the youth, they were not involved in uh, deciding whether uh, what actually uh, goal should be uh, fulfilled by 2015. So we are saying, when we are talking about the post-2015 agenda, uh, we actually need to take them into a ground, uh, let them think and decide what actually to be uh, involved in the post-2015 agenda. Speaking of the world I want, really, uh, I would wish to see this world where uh, especially the youth uh, do not suffer uh, from unemployment. And I will not <coughs> blame uh, for uh, not bringing uh, uh, these uh, employment opportunities, but I would wish to see uh, the education curriculums are revised in a such a way that 
uh, to emphasize on uh, uh, action-oriented uh, curriculum, uh, which actually would help these students after their graduation to uh, possibly uh, employ themselves in private sectors. And what I can just say is uh, we have got to make the decision today that uh, we dare make uh, uh, decisions because they say we cannot abstain from uh, sleeping because we are afraid of uh, dreaming. Yes, there might come uh, consequences from our decision today. There might come negative effects. But again, we have to take the advantage of the opportunities of however it, it may be of the better consequences that might come out of that. Therefore, I am optimistic that uh, the 20, uh, 2015 uh, poly, I mean, development agenda will be uh, actually promising than it were the current images. Thank you. Um, na ito Rahim Rajab Nasa, ni mwanikiti wa kamiti ya kwanza ina usiana na maswala ya afya na maradi. Uh, ni kizungumzia ilu ya maswala ya mipango ya milenia, uh, ya dalanisho mwaka ya kumbili, mpaka ya kumbili na kuminatano. Kwa unyumla wake, minadhani kuna vitu ambapo mwakosekana. Na vitu ambapo mwakosekana na niyake, ni kubwa zaidi ambacho kimezungumzwa na ambacho kipo na kinachoonekana dhahiri ni uhusishwaji wa vijana ambao watu ndio wao nguvu kazi hasa na watu wanaohusika zaidi katika utekelezaji wa malengo haya ya dunia. Uh, kiasi cha pili ambacho kimezungumzwa ndani yake ni kukosekana kwa mawazo ya watu ambao wana ulemavu wa kiasi fulani. Pengine wanashindwa kuzungumza, wanashindwa kusikia vipofu ama vizuri katika malengo haya ya wakati wanatengenezwa na kuwekwa hayajatuonyesha uhusishwaji wao wa moja kwa moja katika kuunda malengo haya kwa maana nyingine inaonekana uh, vile vitu ambavyo vinahitajika kwao kwa kiasi kikubwa kimekosekana kuhusishwa ama kuwekwa ndani yake kwa maana nyingine kwa, kwa, kwa kusema hilo kwamba malengo haya milenia ina kiasi kikubwa ambacho kimekosekana katika hicho um, nikizungumzia juu ya malengo ya milenia ambayo inahitaji yawe mnahitaji ya ende. Uh, kwanza kabisa katika hili maha, katika haya malengo ya milenia ambayo tunayo ili lengo la nane ambayo linahusiana na mahusiano ya kimataifa. Nadhani mataifa tajiri yana yana hayaitumisa wasawa malengo haya ya milenia hasa hili la nane ambayo tunazungumzia. Ah uh, wamekuwa kwamba badala ya kutumia lengo uh, hili kama lilivyo dhahiri kuwepo kwamba kupunguza nusu ama robo ya utajiri wa nao katika nchi masikini wamelitumia lengo hili kujiongezea utajiri kwa kusema kwamba tumeingia katika nchi masikini kutafanya uh, utafiti kutafuta kitu fulani lakini matoke yake wanafanya utafiti na kuchukua vitu vilivyopo katika nchi masikini na kuweka kwake kwa kutumia uh, malengo haya kama njia ya kujitongezea utajiri kitu tunachohitaji uh, malengo ya milenia yako ambayo yanagusa yana, yana haswa yanatugusa kwa namna moja ama nyingine katika nchi nitokana kwa nchi ya Tanzania malengo ya milenia uh, yanatukuta yana hasa lengo la pili linalohusiana na masuala ya uh, elimu masuala ya elimu ni kweli tatizo katika nchi yangu lakini bado 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 haidhishia pale ambapo tunataka kwa shule za msingi peke yake sio mwisho ambao tunahitaji tunahitaji hata sekondari mpaka kiwango ningependa kuona malengo ya milenia yanayoundwa na upya yatoleundwa upya ama yatakayoongezewa nguvu katika haya tulionayo yanawahusu zaidi elimu ya sekondari na ya vyuo vikuu ili uwezo wetu wa kufikiri ufikie mbali zaidi kufikia hapa tulionao nadhani katika dunia ninayohitaji ninahitaji dunia ya amani ninahitaji dunia ambayo kila mmoja msikini atajua raha anazopata tajiri na tajiri hapa ajue mtumwa anapata masikini ili tuwe katika hali ya usawa iko amani pia malengo haya yamekoseka ya, 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 yamekosa sera ya ulinzi mataifa mengine hayajui ulinzi tunakosa ulinzi tunakosa security ambayo ingepaswa kuzungumzwa kwa namna moja ama nyingine ingeweza kufanya mataifa uh, hizi nchi hizi ama malengo haya yafikiwe kwa, kwa hali hiyo ikiwa itatokea malengo haya ya milenia yatavunjwa na kuundwa mengine basi haya yataundwa yawe yatazungumzie ya, 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 hasa uhuru wa nchi fulani ulinzi wa nchi 
ikiwa yataamuliwa kuundwa ku, kutiwa nguvu haya tulionayo basi nitoe nguvu katika lengo la kwanza la ganja na msikii tutoe ajira kwa watu haswa vijana ili tuweze kufikisha hapo hilo ni sahani ya maana yangu na mazoea yangu na malengo ya maendeleo ya milenia ni miaka 15 toka yameanzishwa na tunaweza tukasema kwamba kwa kiasi kikubwa yamebadilisha maisha ya watu wote ulimwenguni. Kwa kiwango kikubwa tunaweza tukasema kwamba uwezekano wa kuwa na maeneo nane ya kufanyia kazi imekuwa ni mtazamo bora zaidi wa kufanya kazi kuliko ikiwa kila nchi ingekuwa inafanya kazi kipeke yake. Kwa sasa tunaweza kuwa na sauti moja kuhusiana na kiwango cha elimu, afya ya uzazi, upungufu wa magonjwa ya ukimwi kama ukimwi, makubaliano ya kisiasa, kukabiliana na mabadiliko ya tabia ya nchi. Lakini kulingana na malengo haya nane ya milenia ndipo tunaweza kuona changamoto. Na changamoto hizo ndizo zinazojenga kitu kitakachofuata baada ya kumaliza malengo haya ya milenia. Kwa hiyo kwa kiwango kikubwa naweza kusema kwamba ulimwengu tunaotaka ni ule ambao utaujenga juu ya malengo nane ya milenia. Yale yaliyokuwa yanapungua katika malengo nane ya milenia ndio yanatakiwa kujengewa juu yake. Dala kukoje. So there you've had it the viewers you've seen what the use of Tanzania different parts of Tanzania from both from mainland and from Tanzania, Zanzibar. You've seen what the youth have to say, you've seen how they feel about all the development program agendas, about the MDGs, how they want the post-2015 agenda to reflect them, and how they want to be, it to be inclusive. And you've also seen the world they want and what they expect their leaders as they start, as they sit to decide on the post-20 development agenda, what they should think and have in their heads and in their minds to know that the youth right now, they want to play a part. They want to be part of development. 